Salutations. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Hi, how are we today? How are we doing? Doing good? You know, uh, if you woke up early with me, it was a great time. We were hanging out uh, on my personal stream over on Behance this morning, super early, having some coffee, having a little bit of toast, and just hanging out. That is where we do the reviews for our Daily Creative Challenge. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's talk about where we are and who we are and why we're here. This is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. My name is Andrew Hockrattle. I am your host, guide, and um, I don't know, saddle riding horse thing. I don't know. We're doing a Western theme, uh, and we're going to be teaching you something new in Adobe Illustrator every single day for the next two weeks. And hello, lots of familiar faces in chat. We've got Kristen, Andre, hi, Robert, Christelle. Um, how many of you were there in the morning today on the personal stream? Uh, if you did miss it, you can check it out over here, behance.net slash hawk.co. That also is my uh, username on Instagram, Twitter, wherever, if you want to follow along. There's a little bit of behind the scenes. If you want to see what's on that side of the camera, you can check that out in in my stories. All right, let's go ahead and hop in and tell you about how you can all get involved. These are the daily creative challenges, which means that there is a challenge on the daily. That's right, every day there is something new. And you can go over to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. That's the place to be to get connected and to join our community of our challenges. Um, hey, Megan, nice to see you. And look at lots of people in the morning feedback. Love that. Um, so, you can get involved over here at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. You can click this button that just says take the challenge and it will notify you every day in your creative crowd Creative Cloud app that there is a new challenge available. Um, you also can scroll down here and grab the uh, source files. That's the words that I want. Uh, you can grab the source files for our daily creative challenge. Today, you kind of need it. It's similar to yesterday's. It's more of just a background for you to work off of, um, but it's going to be very, very fun. Uh, today, we're making rope brushes, and I promise we'll do chains too. We'll do some bonus content. So those are some ways for you to get involved. Also, while you're here, if you're going to be posting your work, you can post it on Behance using hashtag AI daily challenge, and using that hashtag will put you in the running to be featured here in the creative cloud uh in the creative challenges behance gallery right be cool super cool uh, to be featured and one more announcement before we hop in here uh right after this stream we have our friends amy and jen hood we love them here on the stream so stick around for that right after this illustrator daily creative challenge i'll remind you at the end and i'll give you a secret emoji um for you to drop into their chat all right one more Sorry, literally some, my neighbors are power washing. Okay, um, anyway, if you hear something in the background, it's them. Uh, Bit.ly AI Discord, this is where you can get uh, involved. This is where you can uh, join our Discord. And our Discord is a place that we are doing reviews where we read those reviews from the morning. Looks like Jack is going crazy right now over in our Discord. Let's check it out. This is where people are posting their work. Um, and we have some awesome work here. I was giving feedback this morning. Um, and it seems like some people are applying that feedback, which is really great, um, and leveling up their skills. If you missed it, uh, the link is right here if you want to go there and click and check out that link. Um, and yeah, this is where we are. I look and I look at something like this and I say, hey, maybe we can add a little bit of a darker color as an inner glow from the center. And that will kind of level it up to the next level. So uh, try that, Jamie. See what you can get. And this is a place that I will be reviewing those pretty much every day or night in the morning or late, late at night. And I'll post that link in our Discord. All right. That was a lot of announcements. We made it through. Let's go ahead and hop in to our challenge today. We're going to be making some rope brushes and some chain brushes. It's going to be a great time. And if you're just tuning in and you're going to be a little bit confused, it's okay. We are having fun on the stream. We were having a good time. There's no wrong answers. We're going to experiment with stuff and see what happens. And we always do it through a theme. And so we are in the middle of doing a Western theme to help you think of ideas as you explore the new tools that we teach you in Illustrator. So let's hit the trail and get started. <laughs>
All right, we are back. We are here um, in the saloon hanging out. And look at this, Amy Hood. Amy Hood is in the chat. Make sure that you stick around after this for um, Amy and Jen. We are going to be here today and tomorrow with them. So um, this is just the hype squad. We're going to teach you something new, but really we're just here to hype. So let's go ahead and hop over into Illustrator, look at our daily creative challenge, and teach you how to make some rope brushes, um, which I believe that Amy and Jen have done some really cool rope stuff before. I've like... I. And maybe not, but I remember they do great lettering work. Uh, they have some great fonts. And so this is inspired by them. A uh, chain loop stitch is where we're going to kind of go today. So here's our challenge. Create a custom rope inspired brush using the pen tool. So we're going to do a couple different versions of rope brushes. One's going to be easy. One's going to be a little more advanced. And then one's just going to be a chain. Um, so let's go ahead and hop in here. And I'm going to move off the artboard. This is where we'll be working today. But I'm going to move off the artboard first. And you can see my hotkeys down here in the corner. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to use a straight line with some effects to create that rope, right? We're going to do a three braided rope to start out with. So what I'm going to do is grab the pen tool, hitting P. I'm going to click and then hold shift to make a straight line and holding shift will make that straight line. And when I click again, now I have a fully straight line, right? Looks good. Now to create this three braided cord, a lot of times people will try to use the pen tool to create this like looping arc. Check this out. It's so much easier than that. All we're going to do is select this line, go to effect. We are going to go to distort and transform and hit zigzag. Now zigzag is going to be so much fun uh, because it makes it all ziggy and zaggy. Um, official terms here. You heard it first. So we're going to change this to smooth. And by changing the size, that's just basically showing how much it's going up or how much it's going down. So we actually want this to be pretty high and pretty low. And instead of having four, when you're creating a pattern brush, you always want to make sure that it is starting where it's stopping. So you always want to have an odd number of rides and rides are basically how many ups and downs. So we want an odd number of rides. Let's do three and we're going to hit OK right there. Uh, and yes, Amy's here a little bit early for me and I'm going to be a little bit late for you. So it's perfect. Um, now that we have this perfect little ride wave, this is going to be one of the braids of our, um, of our rope, right? So I'm going to grab this and what we're going to do is we're going to hit R to rotate and holding shift and alt or option, we're going to click and drag and flip that 90 degrees. We also 180 degrees. We also can right click transform and uh, reflect. There it is. <laughs> reflect um, vertical. We want to do horizontal so that it flips the other way. So we're going to hit copy. Nope. It was the opposite. I'm just going to rotate it. There we go. All right. Uh, where was the zigzag? It was in effect distort and transform. So now that we have this, we have two lines. We're going to select one of them and just make them a different color. So let's make it pink so we can see. Actually, let's make it green so we can really see it. So now we have two lines, right? These are two braids of our ups and downs of our rope. And we're going to do a third one in the center. So again, I'm going to grab this same, uh, this same cord, right? It really is just a straight line with that zigzag applied. Except on this one, I'm going to come over to my effects panels. And guess what? We're just going to turn off that zigzag. So now we just have an st a straight line. I'm going to change this one to brown. Why not? And then align it right back up on there. So if you can see, it looks like it's all complex, but when I change to outline modes, hitting control Y, it's literally three lines, three lines with different effects on them. So what we're going to do now is we are going to outline this so that it's not just three lines. We're going to go to object. We're going to go to expand, appear, expand appearance. And now you can see when I go to outline mode, we do have all of those lines perfectly aligned. Now, it's great that we have a whole bunch of different rides, but when we're working with a pattern brush, we can actually simplify this down a lot. So what I'm going to do is just make a copy of this whole thing, um, clipping, clicking and holding alt or option to drag down and watch this. I'm going to grab a, the direct selection tool, and I'm just going to click and drag and delete literally all of those points. Oopsies. Oh, that's fine. So we, we missed our uh, middle line here, but I'm just going to go ahead and redraw that one right there. Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is braiding, right? It looks like it's going back and forth. So this line here, I want to send to the back. I'm going to hit control shift and bracket to send that all the way to the back. 
And it looks like this needs to go a little bit higher so that we have some room in between these. Yeah. I want to have an extra copy there. Okay, cool. So we're just grabbing the direct selection tool to grab these anchor points. And I'm making it so that there's a little bit of room here. Uh, maybe we can do a little bit less in between those three. So now we have one set of our pattern. Now I want to make it look like it's weaving back and forth in front and behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this whole thing. And this will be the second part of our pattern. We're going to align it right here. And what I'm going to do is actually make this one green now. And I'm just using the eyedropper tool to select that path, hit I, and create a new path. So it looks like it's all going and flowing together. We can do the same thing with the brown. We're just going to right click, arrange, and bring that to front, or use this hotkey, control, shift, and bracket. So we have all of those through there. And now what I want to do is we're going to make this the colors that I actually want it to be. So we're going to do a dark brown here. We're going to do a lighter brown for this red. Uh, and then we'll do a, a nice tan for this middle one. There we go. So now we have all three. So this is, again, going to start where it stops and repeat. So with these, we are going to select them all and go up here to our brushes panel. You can see I've been practicing. Um, and we're going to click on the plus. And instead of any of these brushes, now we will come back to these in future lessons. We 100% are going to cover um, scatter brushes as well as art brushes later on in these challenges. But today we're going to focus on the pattern brush. And again, think of the pattern brush as illustrator saying, we're going to take this piece and then put another piece and another piece and another piece and just repeat it. But it's going to figure out what happens on the curves, on the in-between. It's going to do all that for us. So we're going to hit OK on the pattern brush. And this pattern brush, you can see the preview here, and it looks like it's pretty close to what we want. Um, we're going to name this one Braided Rope. And we're going to change the colorization to Tints. And allowing it to do Tints means that we're going to be able to change the color to whatever color we want it to be. So we're going to hit OK. And now you can see we have a little brush. Now this brush is automatically selected. And if we zoom out here, let's come up to uh, where we are. And maybe I want to do my initials, right? And uh, let's just do, I'll use the brush tool um, to draw out my initials in maybe cursive, a fun little cursive. And again, Amy and Jen are way better at this. Stick around for their stream if you want some actually good lettering. Uh, but here we're gonna use our rope brush and we are just going to click and I'm going to draw my name in cursive very sloppily. Yes. And so it might look something like this. So what's happened is our braided rope has gotten way too big, but that's all right. We can come in and edit this brush by going into this little panel right here. So we're clicking on the brush menu. Then we will click on the little menu right here. And you can see that the brush is way too big. So we're going to augment the scale. We're just going to take this scale and bring it down. You can see the preview is starting to show us a little bit better what that might look like. So we bring it down a little bit more and hit OK. And there we go. So now we have this nice, uh, this nice rope that's kind of looped around. I can change the color to be a little bit darker if I want, and it's going to change those. Uh, and I want you to see, yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. I want to see uh, what this brush actually looks like when I scale it up. So we're going to scale up uh, higher and higher. And you'll see that it is following that line and it is moving back and forth. It's having all of the interaction that we want. If we want to make a circle, let's say, it will uh, actually close this out. Where's our brush? There we go. It'll brush, close this out into an actual circle so it looks like it's weaving in and out of itself. Um, and so you can create whatever you want using this technique. Now, let's do um, real quick, let's do a chain because I want to show you uh, how you could do a chain. And again, think about the principle that whatever we make is going to continue again and again and again. And yes, better than my scrawl. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to make a chain. And I actually have a chain right here. Let's see if we can get a good look at this. Um, let's go back to here. So I have a chain here, Beauty Guru. And you can see that each of these pieces is kind of interlocking. Uh, this chain actually came with this jacket. Um, my friend Rick Villa uh, Via made it. He's a designer, and it's awesome. Anyway, um, you can do a chain, right, is really just two links. So we're going to start out... We're going to make this pretty thick. You can see my hotkey just shift up um, creating that. Let's go back to the screen. I do that all the time. 
Uh, so now we have one side. We're going to do the other side by just clicking and dragging to make a copy. I'm going to use the direct selection tool to delete these two points and then command J to close those points out. So now I have um, the first link in the chain and I'm going to do a second link. I'm just going to click and drag the second link out to the side. And what I want to make sure of is that the inside flips, right? The chains are always interlocking either way. So we're just going to make a little circle in the middle here. And then again, connect that over here. We're going to do the same thing by deleting those insides and then just joining using Command J, Command J, and make sure that this is all aligned to the center. So I'm going to do that by grouping these two chains, selecting this as the key object, and then aligning to the center right there. So that looks pretty good to me. And what we want to do now is we are going to outline this. So we're going to go to Object and Expand. Now remember, we want Illustrator to take whatever we have and repeat it. If we repeat it right now, it's not going to link this chain. It's going to have two separate sides. We want to make sure that it's repeating and linking that chain. So what we can do is we're actually going to um, take away either side of these chains. So we're just going to make two boxes. Oops. We're just going to make two boxes right here. I'm going to make these a compound path using Control-8. And then we'll see that we can use the Pathfinder tool to take away any of those sides. So now we have two sides, right? Pretty perfectly aligned on either side. And this is where we're going to start to make our, um, start to make our chain that overlaps, right? So let's do some colors here. Let's make sure that this one is the same color gray. And again, you want to think wherever it's starting, then the next one is stopping. So we're going to do uh, a nice dark gray here. And what we want to do is make sure again, that it's looping above and behind, right? Each one is going to go above or behind. So we need to make a copy of this one and I'm using control shift V. And then I'm just going to make a little clipping mask for this to put it over that other chain. Let's make sure these are the same color. There we go. To make sure that it goes over that other chain. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, we're thinking that it's going to start and stop. We are going to select this, go back up, and click on plus. Go to our pattern brush and hit OK. Now you can see it's already doing it for us, and we are going to name this one Chain. Chain, there we go. We're going to hit OK, and now we have our chain brush, and with that selected, we can make a chain. So very, very easy to make that chain. It is overlapping, looks like it's interlocking. Um, one goes over, one goes under, kind of loops in. Uh, and it actually looks like I want this to be the opposite way. So watch this. I can actually come in here. Uh, let's do this. Let's bring this over here so we can see it live update. So it looks like I want it to go the opposite way, right? I want it to loop over one side or the other side. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. I'm just going to rotate it right there. And you know what? This should be over both of them, shouldn't it? I think that that's the problem, is that both of this should just be on top like that. So let's see what this looks like. All we need to do if we make a change to our brush is we need to open our brushes panel, which is over here. And I'm simply going to click and drag this object into this brush. I'm going to hold Alt or Option over um, what we have here and it will update that for us. So we're going to hit OK and here it is going to apply to strokes which means it's going to update all the strokes that were already there and there we go. Now our alignment is better. It looks like they are kind of linking over each other um, way better. We can use glows from yesterday to make it look three-dimensional. Oh, you betcha. You can use glows absolutely. So if we want to, we can grab this shape very quickly. We can uh, add a stylize. We can add an inner glow. Let's just do black. So we'll hit OK, make that inner glow a little bit more. And sure, we'll do 100% opacity. There we go. And hit OK. Now we have that nice inner glow on there. It's not, not showing up well, but you can. You can add glows and effects, and it will convert into those uh, brushes as well. You also can add shading, right? So if we wanted to add shading here, Maybe we just do something like this, and I'm going to do this pretty quick. 
so that we can see um, and have time still to talk through. Um, we can make shading, which I'm going to do with a little bit. There we go. And we want to make sure that the shading, that these pieces start where they end. Again, we want to make sure that everything is matching up on either side. So I am going to need to take some stuff out here. I'm just taking out that extra line to make sure that these align across there. I'm going to make sure this is still on the top. And why not? Let's do one here as well. And again, I am going fast here. This is kind of just to show you that you can do some shading. Um, let's do... Let's do shading in the middle somewhere like there. So now we have our shading. We can simply come back to our brush panel right here. We can grab our object and again, click and drag holding alt or option over the center. Um, I hit something weird. That's what happened. <laughs> let me fix, let me see what's happening. I did something weird y'all. Uh, I'm not sure what I just added that is not uh, going through but I definitely did something that was weird. Maybe it's, ah, see, there we go. Let's turn off the inner glow and see what happens. That might've been a, if with it in a groove. Yes, okay, cool. So we're gonna apply to strokes and now you can see we have some awesome shading on that chain. We don't have to worry about any of it. Um, really, really great to make that quickly um, and very easily. And again, if you wanna do a circle, who cares, why not? Let's do a circle and we can use the brush that we've made right here. And now we have a circle of chains, oops, that is all put together, super easy. So just making sure that everything is going from uh, one side to the other, and then realizing that it's going to repeat and repeat and repeat again. So if you want to join us again, come to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. That is a place you can get the source files and you can start bringing, I got the hiccups. You can start uh, building out your ropes, your little lassos, as well as a chain. If you want a jacket chain, uh, you gotta have one. And you can get all your information and watch the videos there if you have missed them. You also can follow along on my personal Behance or social media right here, hawk.co is the username pretty much everywhere. And I'll be doing your challenge reviews, which you will be posting at this link, bit.ly slash AI challenge, uh, sorry bit.ly slash AI discord. That's the word that I want. Um, and you'll be posting your challenges there, just like these people here. Um, Tan Illustrator, really great job. Love your stamp from yesterday. So make sure you post all of your stuff there. Uh, and make sure you tune in again tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We will be uh, doing another daily, daily creative challenge. I believe tomorrow we are going to be... Um, doing a little bit of a little bit of sheriff badge stuff. We're going to make some badges, um, make sure that we are copacetic, ready to go, and that everyone in our Western town knows exactly who we are and what we do. So what I want you to do now, this is the moment. We're we going to start with the hoods in about seven minutes. So Amy and Jen Hood will be going live in about seven minutes over here, behance.net slash live. Um, make sure that you stick around for that. And as they go live, I want you to put a diamond emoji. There is a diamond emoji. Make sure you drop those in the chat, but not till they get started. Don't do it before. Once they get started, very beginning, show them some love and drop that diamond emoji. I'll be in there as well. Um, it's going to be a super great stream. We're doing some branding, I believe, for a... Um, a uh, company called Green Room, I believe. They've been posting on their Instagram. You can go check it out and follow them. Um, but let's take a look at the schedule for the rest of the day because I want to make sure that I highlight everybody. Um, we have Amy and Jen Hood coming up next. Like we said, they are here today and tomorrow. Then we have Andrea Epi doing the XD Daily Creative Challenge. It's exactly like this, but for Adobe XD. So if you um, love these challenges and have fun here, Challenge yourself, try to learn XD. It's a super powerful tool, something that I've branched out to the last year. And it's so helpful in the design process to prototype very quickly. Um, and then we have a creative encore. At the end of the day, our friend Voodoo Val is back with Jetpacks and Roller Skates, who is one of my favorite illustrators. Uh, he's been one of my favorites for a while. So stick around for all those. We'll have a little watch party at three o'clock. And uh, stick around, stick around for the hoods. It's gonna be a great time. They're gonna be on for a couple hours. We're gonna hang out, we're gonna chill, little SoCal takeover, and I will see you all tomorrow on the next Daily Creative Challenge. Bye.